Good morning. On this 13th day of July, 2020, my name is Deacon Michael Barrett, and uh, I'm here to uh, celebrate our prayer service this morning. Uh, we, we see today that um, the great, there's a great message in the scripture readings about taking up our crosses and following Jesus in the way that uh, he worked out salvation for all of us. Today is the Monday in the 15th week of Ordinary Time. And we have an optional feast day of, of St. Henry II, uh, who was a, the king of the Roman uh, Empire uh, shortly before the uh, beginning of the um, first millennium. And between him and his wife, they uh, reformed the church and did many great things. So they both were canonized. And uh, so we, we honor them today. It's also uh, a special day for um, other Christians um, with the movement that was going on in Nazi Germany. Uh, in the spring of 1942, a small group of university students in Munich formed an underground anti-Nazi circle called the White Rose. Its members were all motivated by Christian faith, whether Catholic, Lutheran, or in the case of Alexander Shmerel, one of the founders, a Russian Orthodox. Their subversive activity consisted of circulating mimeograph leaflets, urging their fellow Germans to uphold the honor of their country by rejecting Hitler and his crimes. Shmerel a medical student and former army medic also traveled to Austria to spread the leaflets. Their actions grew the Gestapo's intense fury. The leaflets denounced the Nazi policy of euthanasia, a program aimed at those regarded as unfit or unproductive. They denounced the murder of Jews in Poland. Here we see the most frightful crime against human dignity, a crime that is unparalyzed in the whole of history. They denounce the blasphemy of Hitler's invocation of the Almighty, by which he means the power of evil, the fallen angel, Satan. We must detect evil where it is strongest, and it is strongest in the power of Hitler. Eventually, the conspiracy was undone. After Hans and Sophie Scholl were arrested while distributing leaflets at their university, the rest of the conspirators were quickly apprehended. All were beheaded on July 13, 1943. And in 2012, uh, Alexander Schmerl was canonized by the Russian Orthodox Church. And his last words were, I'm convinced that my life has to end now, early as it seems, because I have fulfilled my life's mission. I wouldn't know what else I have to do on this earth. And so we honor uh, this Russian Orthodox saint uh for carrying out his christian beliefs and combating evil in the world so let us begin our service today with a prayer as for me and justice i shall behold your face i shall be filled with the vision of your glory let us begin as we begin all things in the name of the father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, com and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. Jesus, help us bear our cross as you showed us. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, help us follow you in moments of fear. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, grant us our salvation through your death for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who showed the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for their faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instructions of your God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of whole burnt rams and the fat of fatlings and blood of calves, lambs, and goats. I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who ask these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moons and Sabbath call of the assemblies. Actives with wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festives I detest. They weigh me down. I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourself clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wronged. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 50 today. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifice do I rebuke you. For you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goat out of your fold. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you hate disciples and discipline and cast my words behind you, to the upright I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. They that offer praise as a sacrifice glorify me. And to those that go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, do you think that I have come to bring peace among upon the earth? I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's enemies will be those of their household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up their cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because they are a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous person because they are righteous will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because they are a disciple, amen, I say to you, they will surely not lose their reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his 12 disciples, he went away from that place to teach and preach in their towns. The Gospel of the Lord. In this reading, I'd like to reflect on the uh, one phrase in the gospel that said, whoever does not take up their cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. You know, most great love stories involve a lover making huge sacrifices for the sake of the beloved, crossing oceans, losing one's reputation, forfeiting wealth, even risking death. All such sacrifices are made happily and boldly with no regrets for the sake of the beloved. But the greatest love story of all is the one of God who made the most amazing sacrifice imaginable. He took in our humanity, not as a conquering hero, but as a tiny baby. He was willingly mocked, spit upon, tortured, and finally crucified, all out of love for each one of us. How can we possibly respond to so great a love? Can we be like our Savior? the lover who was happy to sacrifice for the ones he loves. Can we accept and bear our crosses as Jesus did, out of love for the one who sacrificed for us? We all have crosses to bear. It comes with living in a fallen world. We could grudgingly resign ourselves to them. Or out of love for God, we could accept them with peace, and trust and try to be as loving and merciful to those involved as Jesus is to us. So if we are caring for a family member with a mental illness, we can do it lovingly and with prayerful trust in the Lord. If we have to relate to a difficult boss each day, we can do it with forbearance and kindness. If we are serving in a ministry to the poor or the homeless, 
We can serve even on days when we would rather be doing something else. The late Superior General of the Jesuit Order, Father Pedro, Pedro Arupi, once wrote, what you love with God will decide everything in our lives, including how we take up and respond to our crosses each day. The world's greatest love story is our story as well. And because God loved us first, we are able to bear our crosses with love and joy of a lover. And that makes all the difference. Lord Jesus, help me to take up my cross and follow after you today with a heart full of love. And now we offer up the prayers of the faithful. Lord, we ask you to look down upon all those who are struggling with their crosses and ask that you um, instill within them your love and your understanding that in bearing those crosses and following Jesus, they will attain the glory and the joy and the peace that they are so desperately seeking. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for all of our world leaders, our church leaders, our civic leaders, our legislative leaders, that they have this great power to provide us with security and uh, umbrella of uh, uh, openness to practice our faith and to uh, live out our lives as uh, we are created to do. But we also uh, honor those leaders because they become uh, our first symbol of what it is to lead and struggle with their own crosses and how in, in, in struggling with those crosses, they come to follow Jesus, even when they don't recognize that at first. So we, we include uh, our leaders in that prayer so that uh, all may take up their cross and follow Jesus to their salvation. We pray to the Lord. We also pray for uh, all the sick and the infirmed those with the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, that uh, they will take up that cross of dealing with the results of the illness and that um, in, in that understanding of they're not alone in this and Christ is walking with them, that they too will uh, come to an understanding of uh, using that cross in a positive way to follow Jesus. We pray to the Lord. We also pray for those, our loved ones, who have gone before us in the sign of faith who have in their own lifetime experienced many of those um, crosses and uh, how they have taken up those crosses and uh, followed Jesus in spite of the consequences. And now that they have completed their journey and they uh, 
reach out and are welcomed by the loving, caring arms of the Father. Join him in uh, celebration at that Eucharistic banquet table. We pray to the Lord. And let us now quiet ourselves down. Take a deep breath. And reflect and pray for our intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we take all these prayers that uh, have been offered up this morning and we turn them over so that um, the, the acceptance of our love for you and uh, ask that, as in all things, your will will be done with our petitions. We pray to the Lord. Father, we give up the daily crosses that we bear to you as we ask you to grant us the graces to follow the example of your son, Jesus, modeled for us. Help us to spread the message to all those we encounter. Amen. And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare, dare to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer and extend that peace, uh, keeping proper distance from those that are close to us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And now as we enter into this virtual communion, I'd ask that you uh, quiet yourself down and you focus on our virtual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. Having virtually consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effect upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. And now let's ask for God's blessing. May the Lord look down upon you kindly and may his face shine upon you. May the gospel message resonate in our minds, hearts, and entire being. As we embrace the crosses that we bear as gifts that allow us to follow Jesus and to minister to all we encounter today and every day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This concludes our service today. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God bless everybody and enjoy God's creation today. <laughs>